Good to go. Should we should we start? All right. So singat la kirin kun sakano di kaya kaga akay at ang gida lang s s dilt ako lang koya s s how uh can it wad lahan so hello everyone my name is Cohen Isberg and I come from the Haida territories Haida Nation uh, though today I'm joining you from the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Kosalish peoples including the Musqueam Squamish and Slayo Tooth. Uh, so I, I am such uh, a gracious or grateful, sorry, a grateful guest on their territories, and uh, I, I just love exploring them. So uh, as I do so, I, I try to walk lightly and, and, and thank them every chance I get. Um, I work with Indigenous Tourism BC. Um, I have done so for the past few years, though I've kind of gone, I've run the gambit in terms of the work that I'm doing. Um, what I never thought I would be doing is um, focusing on uh, videography and photography and content creation generally, but uh, it's where I found myself. I have no necessarily formal training. Most of the stuff I know at this point, uh, I've, I've kind of have, has been self-directed learning. Um, but it's been a, a ride and a half, I'd say, over the past year. And uh, I'm so happy to be joining you to, to, to share a little bit about it. And, and Francine is my, my colleague and, and partner in crime. So I'll let her introduce herself as well. Thank you, Cohen. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping to get a chance to connect with everybody and um, have, a, have a good discussion afterwards if there's time. Um, my name is Francine Douglas. My traditional name is Shai Skolwit. And that's a name um, that's been passed down to me from my aunt on my mom's side of the family in Tsa'alus. So I'm Stalo from Tsa'alus uh, here in the Fraser Valley. Uh, my dad is Simshian from Metlakatla um, near Prince Rupert. And um, I'm the Indigenous Tourism Specialist with Indigenous Tourism BC. And um, I, I have a... Um, like my background has been business and in communications for for a long time, and I'm really grateful to be working with Indigenous Tourism BC. And um, I've been learning a lot in the past two years, especially around uh, destination development, and and how that's different from um, from tourism. And really happy to be here, sharing a little bit of um, what 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 journey we've been on um, with Cohen being led by Tawani Joseph, um, the, the Chief Partnership and, and Governance Officer at, at ITBC. And um, what, when COVID hit, it was, um, I, I remember Paula Amos, our Chief Marketing and Development Officer had said, this is, um, you know, we, we really need to, to um, figure out how we're supporting the industry and the indigenous tourism businesses throughout the province. And um, uh, my family at home, especially my mom's side of the family, they call it stepping up when there's something that needs to happen. And I feel like that's the journey that Tawani led Cohen and I on. There was a need to really, um, to, to be able to create um, stronger connections um, and, and create content in this new digital world that, we've, that we're finding ourselves in. And um, I think that's, I feel like that's what Cohen and I did. We, we basically stepped up and said, okay, we're, we're, we're all in and we don't quite know what we're doing, but um, we're willing to learn and do what we can to, to support, um, support to, like creating a, a path for tourism, indigenous tourism in the digital space. So um, I'm just really, really grateful to be here. I really am following the lead of Cohen and, um, you know, he's, He's got some more experience than I do, but um, I think he's found me a studious. He's found me quite studious, and um, and and it's it's been great. So, looking forward to the conversation today. So, thank you, Francine. And I, I wouldn't say studious; I'd say a natural. <laughs> so, um, what screen am I sharing? I don't have a green box around this, so maybe I'm not sharing the right screen here. Let's try that again. So Francine, are you able to see the yep. slides right now? Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah, you're good. So 
Awesome. So the, the, the title of this workshop is Pivoting to Digital and Content Development. Now I read that because, uh, not because you all can't see what I'm looking at, but because um, for us that, that pivot came with a, a really steep learning curve. Um, we don't necessarily or didn't have in-house capacity to do a lot of the work around content creation. And so um, part of, of this workshop is talking about how we pivoted and as well, we'd like to bring in some stories of, of how the businesses that we went and, and met with and, and talked to pivoted as well. But um, it, it really, like Francine said, began with us kind of saying, okay, we're all in, we're going to take the time. I'll, I'll spend my evenings on YouTube learning how to edit videos and all that sort of stuff. I have a little bit of background in photography, which was um, helpful, uh, but certainly videography especially is, is uh, a different beast altogether. So when we began this journey, I was quite, uh, as, as any of you probably who've undertaken a, uh, a new and exciting and innovative uh, project, uh, apprehensive. I was a little bit worried on, on, on my qualifications of, of being able to do this. Uh, but all throughout, and I, I really, you know, put my hands up to our, our board of directors and Tawani and Paula and, and Henry, our, our, our executive team, uh, because they understood that we were learning all of this and, and this was all new to us and, and they invested the resources and the time uh, and, the, and the money in order to allow us to um, you know learn and discover and and from where we are now to where we began or you know from where we began to where we are now um, I think it's it's really been night and day all of the photos that you'll see throughout this presentation uh, we've gathered over the past year or so and, and when I say a year, it wasn't even that because it took us a while to acquire all of the gear to figure out what we needed. Uh, and as well to, with the travel restrictions going on, this was a, a, a challenge for us to, to do, but one that we felt was, was needed. Our businesses were feeling very alone at, at points. And, and that's something that we heard from them on our, on our weekly uh, stakeholder check-ins that we had going on uh, is that they were looking for support, but they were also looking for a bit of community. And so when we set out on this journey, we, we talked about, and a, and a key part of that was, you know, strengthening the sense of community within the Indigenous tourism industry. And so we, we kept that with us in all of our interactions. We were interacting with, you know, with family in, in some respects and, and with, with friends and, and allies of Indigenous people as well in, in many cases. Uh, and it's been a very fulfilling and enriching experience, I think, for both of us. And I, I'll, I'll talk, speak on behalf of, of Francine, though she's more than welcome to jump in and give her own um, opinions and, and things as well. But uh, the, the reception that we received was was very, very positive, just in terms of us getting out there into the community. We went to one business in the Kootenai Rockies region and, um, you know, we, we just kind of, we had been shooting all day sh and, and we decided to uh, take a minute and go and just meet with her and show up at her business and, and, and say, we, we were just wanting to talk with you and, and, and say hi. And, and we know that you just signed up as a stakeholder and we'd love to connect. And, and we brought a camera and we'd love to take a few photos if you're willing. And, and, and what, what we heard from her was, I've been part of so many of these organizations and, and not one of them have ever come out here to this little corner of the province to, to, come, to come see me, not that I expected it, but it, it was just very heartwarming for us to hear, hear that feedback. So we talked a little bit about when we set out on this journey, what we were looking to do. And, and this kind of gives you a sense of the, the areas that we have really invested our time and energy into as an organization in the past, um, experience development, building and, and supporting indigenous communities um, like your own that were looking to develop a tourism experience and, and figuring out ways that we could support them in that. As well as marketing, our marketing team is uh, amazing and they connect with writers and media and, and whoever and, and audiences across the world. And um, so that has, has always kind of been a, a strong piece of what the work that we're doing is, is taking the stories um, that are, are provided by our the businesses we work with and kind of broadcasting out them out to this world, uh, as well as the, the work that we're doing to um, 
engage with those communities and those business owners to find out what they need and what they're looking for and ways that we can support them, but also, um, you know, making sure that they're aware of the, the products and services and uh, funding opportunities that are available to them with ITBC, Indigenous Tourism BC, uh, and throughout other organizations as well. And so we didn't want to necessarily create another full circle in this in this diagram, we didn't want to necessarily be our own entity that was was driving. Our hope was that we could link into each one of those other areas, and we could be a can we can um, pro produce content that is um, hopefully useful for our marketing team as well as our um, experience development teams and our destination development teams, and for our corporate services and, and corporate communications um, teams as well to use to connect back with the the very people that we're we're working so closely with. So this was our hope, this was our vision, and um, you know, it, it, it was a zigzag, I'd say. It was not a straight line from, from one, one end to the other. Uh, we had to adapt, we had to figure out things and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think we have been quite successful in um, creating and, and connecting with people in a way that supports all of these endeavors, both in the content we're producing, but also in the journey of collecting and gathering that content and meeting with people um, and, and joining together in their spaces and, and just speaking with them as well. I, uh, that's not working, there we go. And so this, we have a greater vision of supporting digital development and content development, both photography, uh, videography, but also audio content, uh, also, you know, stuff produced for potentially even television or, or other platforms. And our hope is in that going down this journey, uh, we're really trying to forge a path to uh, allow Indigenous organizations that have um, uh, resources available and, and um, products available to Indigenous peoples and business owners um, so that we can get that message out there. Because oftentimes um, when we have things like uh, funding opportunities or opportunities with the travel trade or media, um, part of the struggle is, is making sure that we're capturing and, and our message is reaching all of those different business owners and all of those different um, nations and band councils and ECDEV corps and, and all those that could potentially take advantage of it, uh, but may not necessarily have the staff or the um, capacity to be constantly monitoring um, you know, what, what we're doing. And so we see this as an opportunity for us to use video and, and hopefully short video clips and, and video outreach and, and going out into these communities to, to carry that message along with us as well to, you know, our 300 plus Indigenous tourism businesses, uh, our partners in the, in the industry, um, as well as our Indigenous leadership partners at the First Nations Summit um, through the BCAFN and the um, UBCIC and, and um, I shouldn't have started, I shouldn't have started naming them because now I'm forgetting the third one, uh, First Nations Summit, I think. Um, and so, you know, we see this as an opportunity for us to connect more closely with them and, and go and meet with them and have some value added interactions where we're producing content while we are communicating with them and, and, and meeting with them. And then all of you as well, um, through direct interactions through your ECDEV corporations or through indirect interactions like with our work with the BC AFIs, Aboriginal Financial Institutions, uh, with our recent Indigenous Community Business Fund, where we're seeing our, our, our partnerships really strengthening, which is, which is amazing uh, as a result of, of this program. So when we do go and meet, it's not just about our partnerships as, as well. It's about understanding your partnerships and, you know, the interrelationship between your band councils and ECDEV corps and your band owned businesses, as well as, you know, the entrepreneurs in the community that are doing, you know, huge things. And, and this allows us to get a sense of the, the workings of your communities so that we can better assist and, and aid in um, development and support and, you know, funding support and, and all those things that we're, we're looking to do to uh, uplift the tourism industry. And, 
as our partnerships um, coordinator or manager, uh, I'll, I'll let Francine talk a little bit more about her experience in working with many of these Indigenous um, businesses and non-Indigenous businesses as we try to strengthen and support the Indigenous tourism industry during this time. Thanks, Cohen. I, I do know since I've since I've been here working with Indigenous Tourism BC, um, I, I learned early that um, partnerships are critical. Um, you know, ITBC is a small team, and our headquarters are are in North Vancouver, and um, yet, you know, we're mandated by um, BC AFN and the First Nations Leadership Council. To, to work with the First Nations communities across the province. And, and you know, that's quite a task, especially when we know um, just the, the sheer amount of diversity that exists. And um, through, the, through the video outreach program, it's, been, um, it's just been amazing to, to create those connections, like Cohen said, um, with COVID um, or even without COVID. I, the, I, I remember Paula, um, Paula Amos um, talking to me about um, the importance of, of strengthening our, our relationship with the First Nations communities across the province. We've um, been in existence for over 20 years now as an organization and the marketing team is just top notch. So when, when there's a market ready tourism business, they're able to um, fly it out the door and, and make sure there's some international exposure. But, um, you know, there's with the with the with the, the number of First Nations communities that are that are want that are turning towards tourism because of sustainability factors and, um, you know, they're and, and understanding the value of tourism as an economic driver. Um, ITBC wants to be there to support those communities and, and um, to connect them to tourism partners throughout the province. Um, even with, um, with the video outreach program, I was really happy and just, just felt extremely honored to, to bring Cohen out to Tsailis, where I'm from. And we were able to um, interview one of our youth who does uh, he does tours in in Harrison Hot Springs, but it's part of our the traditional territory of the Tsailis people, and just to to hear him speak about tourism and how, you know, he sees it as um, a way of staying connected to the land and um, and to be able to share the stories that he's learned. It it was it was just amazing and just um, something you can't. You couldn't capture that in in any kind of written form. Just having, and then to be able to be there to take photos while Cohen was videoing, it was just it was a real honor. And I think these types of these types of interactions they're really leading towards um, you know what what is what is our story as a province, but um, beyond that, what are what are the First Nations stories individually? What is what are the stories that you would like to share? And it's leading into great conversations about um, authenticity, ownership, protocols, and permissions in the virtual world. Um, we've also had um, through the one of the, the the main projects we were working on through COVID was the Indigenous Community Business Fund, and this was um, an opportunity to support um, First Nations communities. Um, with their tourism businesses. And we were working closely with the Aboriginal financial institutions. And um, my job in the project was to reach out and schedule interviews and uh, work alongside Cohen to figure out, you know, what, what's the message in each of these videos. But um, what, what I loved was that each of us has, we all have that same higher vision of supporting our communities um, to be prosperous. And, um, you know, I think about um, Carol Ann Hilton from the Indigenomics Institute, and she says we're, she says we're, not, um, we're not an economic burden. The First Nations people are a powerhouse. And I, I feel that so many of our First Nations communities and our First Nations organizations like CANDU um, and the other hosts that are supporting this conference, we, you know, this is why we're here. 
And it, it was great to be able to connect with TAC, with Tricorp, with ANCO, um, and um, NEDC to just um, to just realize that common vision and um, be able to figure out ways to work together to to support tourism. Cohen. Oh, you're on mute. There we go. Awesome. Thanks, Francine. Uh, so with, with that uh, vision of strengthening partnerships, we, we decided on a message of, of really pulling together across the industry and that it wasn't just us pulling together with Indigenous Services Canada or the Aboriginal financial institutions, but it's also businesses pulling together with one another as well and, and supporting one, one another as a community. Um, and at the end of the day, we as Indigenous peoples, uh, are the people that that are that should be presenting these lands to the world and so you know during this time where a lot of our indigenous communities were closed uh, due to safety and health concerns uh, and provincial orders we still wanted to to have that opportunity for the inv indigenous voice to be heard and we're so grateful um, for the support of some of our industry partners like Indigenous Services Canada and Western Economic Diversification the BC Ministry of Arts Tourism arts, culture, tourism, and sport, um, as well as, you know, some of our, our tourism partners like Destination BC, because they are also looking to support this industry and, and figure out ways to strengthen it. Because the, the tourism industry, in my opinion, in growing up, um, I found it a really beautiful thing because, you know, when I went to work every day up in Haida Gwaii for, for 10 years that I was working in tourism up there, um, I got to, to both present my culture and lands, but also learn about it as well and, and meet with elders and, and connect with people who uh, I may not have otherwise had the chance to do. And, and this is providing the same type of opportunity I'm finding the, that as we go out and connect with businesses for photography and videography, I am learning so much about you know, both my own culture and, and people's, uh, but, but all of yours as well. And, and hopefully all of yours, we, we have, you know, we've only gotten to so many businesses and, and partner organizations so far, uh, but we hope that we can continue that on in the future. And, and I really want the chance to, to um, you know, learn about and experience all of your cultures because as it's gone so far, they each and every one of them is so distinct and so beautiful. And that's the journey that we want to take our um, guests along with as well. The visitors to BC is, is that journey of the beauty of our diversity. We are the largest living assembly of Indigenous po populations and cultures in the world. And, and what a thing to, to present to the world. Um, and, and so we're very, very honored to be going to these communities that are, are allowing us to and that are open to it uh, in order for us to kind of uh, learn from them and, and bring that message through this work uh, to the world as well. So this is one of the most recent videos. This one is a sneak peek type thing. It's an unreleased. Uh, so I'm going to try and play it for you all, actually. And hopefully everything goes well. Um, we shall see. Um, if I want to, maybe I'll just stop the share quickly. And then... Um, I'm going to go here. I think coming to Indigenous tourism locations like the squamish Lilwak Cultural Centre is important for people not only here in BC but across Canada so that they can find out a little bit more about themselves and their communities that they are thriving in. We are all in this together and our history is your history. Wow, have we gone through a year, a tough year, and I'm just absolutely amazed the resiliency of our entrepreneurs how you've um, toughed it out and tried to make it work as best as possible. Whether you're Indigenous or not in any business, if you do not have good relationships, you're not going to be successful. But particularly for Indigenous communities, it's, it's helped us to get that, that hand up uh, so that we can you know, succeed in, in areas where maybe we don't have the expertise and can build the capacity so we can get there. My hope is that the gap that exists between 
First Nations, Indigenous people, and the mainstream society closes. It no longer exists. The other piece that I think is really important and the part that I really love about being involved in Indigenous economic development is the employment opportunities that it creates for our youth. My dream opportunity for the future is to do a second tier of our ambassador program where we can continue on the learning of over the 500 people that have been served since the opening of the SLCC. For my generation, it's been ingrained into all of us to be Pum Kum Squalwell, to be proud of who we are, what we come from, and what we belong to. So those traits and those, those teachings that were ingrained into all of us, we were able to uh, bring that into the tourism business and company. Entrepreneurship is always about the opportunity, what be lies ahead. So I'm hopeful now that uh, we're uh, coming out of this uh, really tough year that uh, people are going to dust themselves off and find that opportunity and, uh, and go for it. And that uh, there are uh, uh, support uh, like uh, uh, Tal Aboriginal Capital Corporation and other institutes who can help you uh, uh, achieve that goal. Awesome. So uh, hopefully that came through a little. I, on my end, the, the audio and the, the lip movement was a little bit off, but you, you get the general idea, hopefully the gist of it all. Um, I'll reshare the PowerPoint. Awesome. So when we went on this journey, I, I I personally didn't know the scale of it. And, uh, you know, we shot all of that, that different footage and, and it's, you know, we still have a ways to go, but considering um, that, you know, the, the bulk of that was captured within a three to four month period at the end of last summer and into the early fall before restrictions happened. And then a little bit earlier on this year uh, when, when restrictions allowed, um, we're, we're, I'd say pretty proud of how far we've come and, and we would really love to see more Indigenous uh, organizations invest in um, their own capacity building towards um, gathering this type of content. The, the beautiful thing about us gathering this uplifting content and this beautiful content from um, Indigenous peoples and organizations and businesses across the province is that we'll have it for years to come to, to look back on the journey that we've gone through. And I think that's a, a really beautiful thing that we haven't necessarily had the, the opportunity to have in the past. Uh, much of, for me in my learning of, of my own culture, uh, a lot of the accounts and things that I've seen uh, around events like in my home territories, the, um, the creation of the Guayanas National Park and Haida Heritage Site and, and those other big events happen through um, footage and, and, and gathered content from uh, news organizations and non-Indigenous organizations that all come with their own story in their heads of what they're trying to tell. Whereas, you know, when we capture it ourselves, we've really seen that, you know, the beauty comes when we give people the space to share their own story and whatever may, may come. And we'll ask questions because it's, it, they're new cultures for us, they're new lands for us, and, and we have those questions. But at the end of the day, it's, it's the stories of from that place and from those, those cultures that, that provide the most um, you know, inspiring piece of, of the work we're doing. And we hope that it will translate on to the rest of the province as they look towards tourism or uh, to our consumers, to our um, visitors who are, are looking to come and experience BC. So that's one of the videos that we've produced uh, as a part of this um, pulling together series in partnership with the Aboriginal Financial Institutions and ISC. And I have to say that, you know, these personal interactions that we have with the Aboriginal Financial Institutions, to be for an example, um, Will, will be carried with me and Francine and our other colleague, Samantha, and, and others as we progress through our career um, it, here at Indigenous Tourism BC. And when we have that, you know, one-to-many approach, when we bring, you know, multiple members of our team out, um, you know, that, that, uh, those connections will hopefully endure long into the future. 
So last year we we had a big year considering um, you know COVID. Uh, we were able to interact with over thirty Indigenous tourism businesses across four regions of BC, including the Kootenai Rockies, Thompson Okanagan, Vancouver Coast and Mountains, and Vancouver Island, um, Caribou Chilcot and Coast, and Northern BC. Many of those communities were closed, uh, and so you know we we one hundred percent respected that. And even those communities that were in those regions we did visit that were closed. Um, uh, there were instances where we, we met with people, individuals or whoever um, outside of those communities or those businesses and, and, and made sure that as we went along, we were, you know, adhering to proper COVID uh, safety protocols. So wearing masks, keeping your distance, um, all of those things were, were a bit of a learning curve for us on, on how do we do this. So uh, we invested in, in the, the type of gear that would allow us to, to do all of this from six feet away type of deal. And then once we had gathered the content, we have to figure out, and this is a, a, a piece of why, you know, a, a, a large investment into this in terms of, you know, tasking multiple members of your team is, is something that we're kind of learning along the way as well is, is for a person to do photography, videography, um, sorting, editing, um, and then final release on social media and everything else. It, it takes time. And so, you know, as we've gone along, we've had uh, the reason, you know, we're still trying to um, show the value of this program to uh, ourselves even and, and saying, you know, this, this investment is, is worth it in us, even though we didn't have that, that technical knowledge at the beginning, uh, simply the drive to do so. Um, and as we've gone along, we've had to learn all of these different pieces and, and hopefully in the future, uh, we'll be able to bring on new Indigenous, um, you know, uh, creatives and, and, and staff members that are going to be, you know, 10 times better than me and 10 times better than Francine. And, and wouldn't that be a wonderful and, and beautiful thing for them to be able to use the, their talents and engage with, with the businesses that we're trying to support um, from the, the foundation that we've been, we've been stumbling along and building. I say stumbling, we've actually been doing pretty good, I'd say, and, and I think we've, we've come very far, very fast. But that being said, um, you know, there's still so much more that we're so excited to learn and, and to, to get to experience as well. And so many places we have yet to go. And, and that's a big piece of it. This is the uh, this is when I had the the honor of going out to the Sahelis community with Francine and, and go to her home community and, and meet with Keegan Charlie. And part of the beauty of, of this has been meeting, you know, all of the elders and community leaders and youth and, and meeting those people and hearing their stories, but having those offside conversations as well and, and just, you know, catching up. And, and I think it's, it's been really especially wonderful during COVID where, you know, it's, it's you know, new people to interact with and, and hear the story from. And, and even as, as Francine and I have traveled, you know, we've been learning a lot about each other's cultures, which has been really wonderful as well. But that does take an investment, I will say, you know, we, we had to invest resources, both time and money, and we had to have our, um, our board of directors and our executive team on board to give us the, the space and the room to, to take um, the time that we would otherwise be dedicating to other projects and, um, you know, learn all of this. And so, you know, it doesn't happen easily. It's not an easy thing to do, but I in my opinion, and, and I think in Francine's and Tawani's, um, you know, being able to, to do this work into the future means that we're able to remain competitive in a very saturated space of social, social media um, and that online digital presence where you have, um, you know, people investing you know, large amounts of monies for, you know, large hotel chains and, and other businesses uh, where many of our business owners don't necessarily have the individual capacity to do so, except maybe for many of the, uh, you know, community owned and collectively owned nations and some of the uh, businesses that, that are, um, you know, have, have already seen the, the, the trend in social media as being a big way to market. And so, 
Social media is not a free marketing opportunity. There is still a cost for collecting that content, but by us, you know, supporting our stakeholders in creating images and video content and that sort of thing for them to potentially share, hopefully we're supporting them by bringing down some of those costs to be uh, engaged in social media in a really high level professional way. And that's our hope. And I'll give it over to Francine. This was a recent um, image that we took with a, um, uh, I was able to travel home and, and do a, a tour at quarantine with um, visiting some, some family with, with you know, medical issues and things. And uh, I was very happy that we had one little, one little day where we were able to go out and, and see the new cabins being built on East Beach on Haida Gwaii from Haida House. And they are beautiful. And every one of the cabins, 12 cabins, has an oceanfront view and a uh, hot tub being put on the deck and, and all that sort of thing. And so, you know, I and many Indigenous people feel so much pride when we see these investments in the, the fact that, that you all are working so hard to create these spaces and create these entities to present to the world because it feels very good to be able to, to turn around and, and, you know, share this story, but also, you know, market these, these beautiful and, and pristine and high level places that, um, you know, you all are willing to share with the world. So, so um, I was very honored to go and, and see these cabins. Francine? Thanks, Cohen. Um, I've, I feel like I've been um, just heavily laser focused or tunnel visioned on to, uh, into the destination development world. It was something I, I didn't quite understand when I first came to ITBC, but um, the, the tourism industry is, um, is quite expansive. And um, I used to always think tourism was about marketing, but there's a whole other side to the industry that's really focused on um, supporting, supporting tourism growth. And definitely the, the global trend is um, how do we do this in a sustainable way? And in Canada and, and in BC, the conversation, of course, is really focused on um, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People and um, the Declaration on the, the Rights of um, Indigenous Peoples Act here in BC. And First Nations people, like I'm, I'm hoping the people in this room um, are, are, are considering tourism and, and working towards um, tourism plans and um, ITBC is here because um, you know, there's, there's some great conversations to be had. I, I do know that the tourism industry in BC is really focused on um, how, you know, how, do we, how do we do this in a way that um, is in partnership with First Nations people? How can we make sure that um, people that are coming into BC, any travelers, they know that they're on First Nations land? And um, you know, these are conversations that we've been able to have traveling and meeting people and, and speaking with the First Nations um, leadership and economic development officers. Um, so it, um, I, I'm just, the, I think this is an important conversation to have and, um, and hopefully through, through video, we can support um, those stories and sharing those stories. So in terms of challenges that we have faced, and, and I'll get, give Francine the chance to talk a little bit about it as well, but um, <clears throat> one of the big ones I'd say is just time restraints and not even our time restraints, but the, the time restraints that our business owners have, you know, in order for them to take a few hours, any one business we can usually do in about, um, we could do it in about an hour or an hour and a half, but in order for us to fully get a, a, the depth and breadth of most of our businesses that, we've eat, that we meet, we, we try to budget around four hours um, to, to be with them and be around them. And, and we don't necessarily need to be interacting with them for that whole time. Uh, but you know, when we go to these businesses, it's important to go on one of their tours or to you know, um, get photos of them preparing meals for us and, and to, to invest some of our um, resources into these businesses as well. Um, 
And so, you know, in order for us to ask for, you know, potentially four hours to bus for us to be in a space where visitors are, are you know, meandering around or, or mingling or, or engaging with staff and, and take photos and take videos. Um, usually they're, they're very, very grateful, uh, you know, uh, for those opportunities, uh, but it is a bit of a disruption to their, their general day-to-day -day operations for us to be in those spaces. And so, you know, there's a bit of a, um, a calculation that needs to happen on how much time we kind of need in order to gather enough kind of content in terms of photos and videos and, and audio content or whatever else needs to happen um, versus our, our disruption to, the, um, to the, the business itself. The, obviously the ongoing travel restrictions have limited our ability to travel to some of the businesses and areas and, and communities that we would love to. Um, we, you know, 100% respect and, and honor the wishes of those communities, um, but it does mean that some of those um, areas, when we when we kind of come around back to those areas, um, it, it may be farther away because there's other communities that we haven't kind of gotten in and around during our travels in the past year, and, and so it may take another, um, you know six months to a year for us to travel to that area again and be able to capture those that we we unfortunately missed due to some of the the ongoing uh, travel restrictions or restrictions around business operations. Another big challenge that I didn't really, I thought about a little bit, but it wasn't something that I, you know, put a, a huge, um, you know, um, amount of worry into was storage, storage being both uh, media storage, but also physical storage and space to use. So I have kind of transformed, I took my desk out of my office um, and took every, you know the, the filing cabinet out of my office and everything else. And I have like a, um, uh, a workshop drawer, so a Husky workshop, and there's a whole bunch of drawers. It's on wheels, so I can wheel it around. Everything's on wheels. I got a, a smaller sit-stand desk, so I can do stuff like this, um, and I just had to kind of adapt my own style of work in order to support me being able to fit cameras and lights and audio gear and all of the other stuff that comes along with trying to do this. And then media storage. So I have... Um, been working off of these for the past year. These are little hard drives. Um, and, um, you know, each shoot with our new camera, we, we started out with a small camera and have since kind of built our, our the, um, you know, level of, of professional camera we have. And so with that comes its own challenges of, um, you know, SD cards or, um, you know, little storage devices that go into the camera, but also where you're going to put it afterwards. Cause for, you know, a 10 minute shoot, that's can be up to 30 gigabytes worth of, of data, which to some of you may not seem a lot, but um, that's like, you know, a thousand times a, uh, a the uh, word document or something like that, or, or more, it's, it's really, really massive. And so having enough digital storage has been a, a challenge for us and, and figuring out the systems around how we store all of that footage and the raw photos and that sort of thing after we've collected that, as well as resources in general, both our, our own time resources. We, we have Francine and I, as Francine especially has other projects um, that obviously need our attention and our time. So being able to refocus back onto, you know, editing photos and, and getting everything ready. And, and thankfully I've been tasked with this being one of my main projects. So um, I can devote a little bit more time, but I too have been in school while, I, while we've been going through this process. So I have other commitments in my life and, and uh, I'm not you know necessarily a full-time employee here right now. So, you know, us doing this has been challenging because of the resources. And I think if you in your organization were to invest in a similar style or product, um, in the in in the initial part of it, you're you might have to manage it off the side of your desk type thing. You'll have other things that you're that you're hired on for. And as the 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 worth itness kind of proves itself as you go along. You'll you'll be able to devote more and more time, most likely, to it as a as a a project. But um, there are kind of uh, restrictions or or, or um, not restrictions, but uh, shortcomings that you'll you'll find in terms of 
uh, devoting a lot of time into this space versus some of the other ones that um, you may be doing in your day to day. Uh, as well as financial resources, you know, cameras and lenses and all of that, it's not cheap if you're wanting to do it at a professional level. And so, you know, that initial investment up front, uh, when in the past, all of the content that ITBC has produced, we've hired outside videographers and photographers to do. And uh, we still are looking to continue some of that work on, especially in around the, the influencer kind of space. And we've, we've been engaging with um, some indigenous influencers, which has been really awesome. And they've been gathering some photos and things as, as well, which is great. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the, the larger videos that we've produced in the, in the past, they come out of much, much higher price tag than what we're able to produce each video from as we produce more and more content and more and more videos that that initial upfront cost kind of pays itself many times over. Um, hopefully if, if, you know, as we, as we move forward and, and, and with COVID restrictions and all that sort of stuff. Um, as well, you know, internet speeds and your computer speeds, we had to invest in a, in a you know, bigger, beefier computer in order to make this happen. Uh, and as well, conflicting priorities from uh, some of the businesses that we're, we're meeting with, you know, this may be from Francine and I, uh, one of the most important things that we're doing in any given week or day. Um, but it, it may not be the case for some of the businesses that we're meeting with or some of the partners that we're engaging with as well. So it's something that we have to kind of uh, balance as well. As well, we've learned a lot of lessons in terms of how we engage with people. Um, in general, we try to give as much lead time as we can before we visit these businesses. But when the opportunity presents itself, you kind of have to take it. So some of these trips, Francine and I have had to kind of drop everything and plan it all in a day's time or in a, a couple days time and have had to travel, you know, to a you know, different area of BC in order to go in and be a part of, of an event that's happening or, or whatever that may look like. So, um, you know, just being super flexible and able to, to kind of pivot as we've gone along has been a, a big lesson that we've learned as well. Uh, investing in photography, videography, and live productions all at the same time mean that we have to learn three very distinct pieces of content creation and so you know it's been great for us because we've we've really been able to kind of diversify our own skill sets and and some stuff helps us in other areas but uh each one is its own entity and and so you know if you are looking to getting into the photo or video or audio or live production um you know properly resourcing each one of those is going to be important because they, they all require different technical abilities as well as uh, equipment that you'll need as well. And so what does that look like? Well, photography uh, is probably the, the least cost depending on what you're trying to do. For a photo camera at a professional level, you are looking from anywhere from $2,500 all the way up to like $8,000 for the camera itself. And then you also have to think about lenses and lenses uh, at, a, at a professional level. And I'm not saying you have to start at a professional level, but it is nice. Um, professional lenses can go from anywhere from 1500 or even a thousand up to, um, you know, um, 3,000, 4,000, and then some of the bigger telephoto ones, they can get up to like $15,000 for one of those really, really big long lenses that you can get really close to wildlife or whatever you're looking for. So your businesses and your uh, organizations that you're working with may not, you may not need something like that, but in general, I'm just trying to give you a, a sense of, of what it takes. Um, tripods, getting a good tripod, that can be like 600 bucks if you're, if, if you want something that's, you know, decent. Uh, flashes, deflectors and diffusers for light, batteries, photo sorting software, photo editing software, and then like I said, storage for the media storage. So all of that is stuff you have to kind of consider when you go down this path. It's not as easy as just buying a camera. Sometimes it's all those other pieces that as we've gone along, we've had to acquire because we, we realize that it's kind of necessary. And video is, is kind of twice as, twice as bad because you need those video cameras. You can do hybrid cameras where they shoot both photo and video, but usually you're getting some restrictions on both of those sides by doing that hybrid. Um, and again, you know, those lenses and all that other, those other pieces that come along with trying to shoot and produce video content. Whoops. But what I will say is that 
it is for me very much so worth it. And hopefully as we move forward, it's going to be very worth it for the businesses that we're engaging with. Um, you know, there are challenges. This particular picture I, I, I chose because it's such a beautiful picture. I love this picture, but I had dust on my sensor as I was taking it. So you can see those little black spots. I can go in and, and get really tricky with the photo editing software, but I thought I'd throw this one in just so you can see it there inevitably comes uh, challenges and hard things that you have to overcome. You can see all these little black dots and things, uh, but these experiences and, and, and getting to, to Francine's in this picture with her, with her daughters who she um, had on this trip and I came along and, and shot some photos because it was an indigenous tourism business that we were working with. Um, you know, th these opportunities to share and connect and then take that back into the work we're doing to support these businesses, but also to market them to the world. For us, it's not necessarily that we are sharing the stories of the Osoyoos people or sharing the stories of the, the Haida people or the, the you know, the um, Wet'suwet'en or, or whoever. Uh, we want to give them space to share their, their own stories, and we want to share the excitement that we had and felt in learning about them. And that's really what we're trying to market is, is our learning of, of your cultures and your lands and, and your experiences. And, and to give you the space to do that, um, you know, we have to, you know, video and photograph and create audio and and all of that and it's it's better to have uh, high quality versions of that so that you're competitive in that you know crazy world of social media and the online space um, as we went along we asked each business where they found inspiration in this past year and and you saw many of those answers yesterday hopefully during Tawani's keynote um, but you know, those were, were super inspiring for us as we traveled to here where everyone, f you know, f felt like they got the, cur the, the, the uh, support to kind of keep going. And, and in many cases, it was around their staff and their communities and the local travelers and, and all of those other pieces. But in doing so, and in sharing those back to the, the very businesses that we are serving, um, we're hopefully as we intended to setting out to strengthen the community that, that is felt throughout this, this um, province around tourism and just togetherness as indigenous people. Francine, did you wanna to end us off with something you found very inspiring in this past year? <laughs> Thanks, Cohen. I, um, I, I think the, the main thing for me with um, with everything that's happened, it's been the opportunity to connect. Uh, Indigenous Tourism BC um, is probably enjoying um, just great communication. There's there's roundtable sessions that um, are that are tour that are province wide and open to Indigenous tourism businesses and and open to you as well if if you're interested in having a focused tourism discussion and um, they've they've been great um, ITBC uh, was hosting them weekly during like the heavy COVID lockdown and they are bi-weekly now but an opportunity for the Indigenous tourism industry to get together and have conversations about um, you know how do we overcome the challenges together and um, even like through the video outreach program it's been it's been great to to be able to connect. I think that's what, um, you know, for for a lot of our families, that's what that that's what it comes down to is is being able to see each other face to face to meet, and um, and and create create strong relationships and partnerships together. Totally. So if there's any questions that anyone has, please feel free. I know Francine has kind of been monitoring and, and answered uh, one question that I see there uh, via the chat. But if anyone has anything else, as, as we've kind of gone along, we're, we're more than happy to, to talk about our journey. Or if you have technical questions about, you know, how we've, how we've specifically done things in terms of um, getting the gear or doing the photo editing or learning how we've learned how to do all of this and, and all that sort of stuff, please feel free. In the meantime, maybe I'll ask Francine a question just so that there's no lull. Francine did not necessarily have a lot of experience uh, with 
professional fo photography uh, before this past year. And at the beginning of it, I was I had my personal camera and I just kind of put it in her hand and I was also taking photos. So I, I, I was kind of the safety net for her, but I said, you know, just start snapping. And the first time she gave me 40 photos I think she snapped and I think I didn't explain it enough because with a professional camera on the same day I think I snapped over 500 photos and that's the joy of having a professional camera is you just hold down the shutter and go <laughs> type of thing and you take a whole bunch of photos and so even in those 40 though she had just as many usable shots I think as I did so it's it's a preference thing uh, I may have had a few more just from from my past as a photographer but um, she was a very much so a natural at it and from then on I decided that it was better for me not to show her how I'm framing things but explain some of the technical ability to use a camera because she was generating so many beautiful photos that were so much different than anything that I would capture because it is very much an art form um, and so from then on I've kind of just let Francine go with the camera in hand and, and shoot um, photos as I'm filming or whatever and that's been pretty incredible to see how, how she's been doing and, and like I said she mm -hmm. has a natural eye for it but Francine how has it been for you to, I, uh, I think it to, was, to learn all this? It was a um, it, it was definitely a uh, I think something that that Tawani wanted to see he really he really had that um just that approach that i think all of us as first nations people in our families um you know i was saying in the beginning of the conversation here that um it was really about stepping up and um seeing that there was a need for something and um and really just following that that approach that we all have when we're you know, if we're teaching our niece something or our nephew something new, um, they go along with us and they watch and they learn. And I think, you know, it was, it was just something that we did naturally together and, um, you know, just to, to go forward and do it. And I, the other part that, um, I also wanted to share was that the, the idea of, um, of us going along this journey was, um, was to be able to, to, to learn what the process is as First Nations communities who are thinking about tourism um, or, or businesses that are, are just starting. Um, a lot of times you need photos and you need video. And oftentimes before, before the marketing plan is figured out, you need to be able to have that communication with your community members. And um, as we all know, um, community members are not going to sit down and read a, a 300 page strategy document. So you need something that is engaging and something that help, that helps tell your story. So the, um, to, to be able to, to, um, to, to share at, at a kind of a base level of what it takes to, to take a nice photo, you know, that's, that was kind of our plan. I see a question from Dana. Yeah, so Dana Moore is from uh, Haida, the Haida Heritage Center and Qualgana Corporation in Skidigit um, has shared that they're planning on launching a their digital package, I suppose, to the world through through e-commerce and online booking and all that. And and so congratulations to you guys. That's that's really awesome to hear. And and I'm sure I I don't know if she has her mic available, but I'm sure she can attest as you build those online spaces, we had had to do a, a complete redesign of our corporate website and our com, com, consumer website and a new app that we produced in the past few years. And as we did it, what we needed a lot of to make it interesting so that it wasn't just text was photos and video content and all that sort of thing. And so it really helps to have some re refresh on that because many of the photos that we used in their initial launch were ones that we've been, been using quite heavily for the past few years. And so as we're going along and collecting new photos and uh, new experiences, we're able to share some of those through that online space as well. And Francine's just shared a few of the resources that, that we have available to support businesses as well. So um, as we go along, we're looking to produce more content that supports you all in your uh, digital content creation. But you know, for some communities, it starts at, at just kind of creating or, or looking at 
um, the potential that that tourism as a whole may provide to your community. So uh, I really recommend that you you check out some of those and subscribe to our newsletter so you can uh, and and please come and follow us on our social media channels as well and, and see some of the work that we're doing ongoing um, and come along this journey as we progress and get better and better at video production and photography and all of that um, stuff that we've been really excited to do over the past past year here. Uh, and I see my contact details and Francine's at the bottom as well. So if anyone needs any support as, as you look at the potential of um, engaging through the digital space with your consumer audience or your corporate audience, um, you know, we're, we're more than happy to share some of our insights as well. What we have found is you have to be just as creative and invest just as much energy into engaging with a corporate audience as you do with your consumer audience. So, you know, we can't just do press releases. We can and, and, and we should in, in many respects because of the usefulness to the news, but in terms of engaging community members, especially indigenous community members who are very, um, many of them are very, uh, you know, adept at, at using social media and that sort of thing, but they don't necessarily join our corporate newsletter list or, you know, see us in those other spaces, um, you know, we need to kind of reach them where they're at. And so hopefully this is a way that we're able to do that and kind of share some of the messages that we have with them through a space that they're already engaging with rather than trying to um, convince them to come over to, to our systems or, or whatever that looks like. But for those of you on the call who are looking to to do some much of the same, um, you know, we're, we're gonna hopefully be sharing our journey over social media as well. So we, we invite you to join our newsletter and, and follow us on social media as well. Uh, and I say hello to you all. Thank you very much, um, Hoichka, for uh, joining us. I think that is us. I don't see any other questions. So hopefully we just explained things so well that you have no questions and you're ready to forge ahead and create your own digital space and um, digital uh, content creation company type of thing. So um, thank you all. And and Francine, I'll let you kind of have the last word if you wanted to say anything else. Just wanted to thank you, Cohen, and thank you to Candu for hosting us. And please do reach out if there's any questions. Thank you. Great information. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Cohen. Yeah, that was a great oh, presentation. Good. Appreciate it. Thanks, Francine. Um, you bet. So that will all be uh, available as well on the HOVA app for six months. And then it will also be on the Alberta Links, or sorry, BC Links to Learning website at linkstolearning.ca for everyone to refer back to, as well as the recording of the entire uh, presentation as well. So we can go back in if you want to find more information as well. Thanks so much, you guys. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to when everything's back up and normal and we can maybe enjoy some of these beautiful places in person. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Us too. So any more questions? If there isn't, um, if anybody, if you guys wanted to even stay on for a couple more minutes, it's up to you okay. um, to see if anybody else has anything. Yeah, I think you to. did explain it too well. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Good. <laughs> Thank you.